In this week's video, we have a look at the exact anatomy of the menisco capsular attachment of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and how it looks on MRI. And next week, we will continue with this topic and then we have a look at some ramp lesions. So you need to watch this one first before you watch the next week's video. <laughs> One out of four patients with ACL tears actually have ramp lesions during arthroscopy. So it's an important topic, it's a frequent finding with ACL tears or in ACL deficient knees and we all have probably already missed some of these. So it's important and to really see these lesions we first have to understand the anatomy. That's why I make a two part uh, video series about this. So we, in this week's video we just have a look at the anatomy and then next week's video will be about ramp lesions and I can show you a few. <clears throat> different types as well. So uh, come back next week and make sure to subscribe and hit the like button if you haven't already and let's start. So you should really be familiar with the anatomy of the posterior medial corner first and if you haven't watched the video about the anatomy there on MRI go check the link in your upper right corner where you have a overview of this anatomy here just a brief summary with these different structures. I will not go into more detail here at this point because we will just focus on the menisco capsular junction here. So basically a ramp lesion, so, so what is a ramp? So if we're talking about a ramp lesion, we have to understand what a ramp is. And basically you can see here the posterior horn of the middle meniscus. This is from a very nice publication in the American Journal of Sports Medicine, a recent one. So the ramp is basically the fall off you have here. So it's like a ramp, like, uh, I, don't, I don't know, maybe skiing or something. So you have a ramp. And then it's a little fall off here because this menisco capsular attachment is not at the top of this posterior horn of the middle meniscus, but rather a little bit further down. And they even measured that and it's about one third down here. So that's the ramp. So a ramp lesion basically is everything that is affecting here the structures in this region or this, this ramp basically. So now let's zoom in here in this knee. Basically, that's how it looks like. We have the posterior horn of the middle meniscus and here we have from uh, the top coming part of the posterior joint capsule a menisco capsular ligament which is inserting here in the upper third of the posterior horn here in the red zone and then we have a menisco tibial ligament that is inserting here and going down about six millimeters. So these are very tiny ligaments. And they are both part or belong to the posterior joint capsule. And depending on which uh, illustrations or papers you read, sometimes you see a separate uh, joint capsule shown here. Sometimes it's just one thing that is attaching here. Now note that these two seem to be in continuation and this was also confirmed in histology in the previous study that I mentioned. So because this menisco capsular ligament here is inserting not on the top, we have this fall off here which can build a little recess here and again this is the ramp so you have this ramp and then whoa you're going down so that's the ramp so lesions here are ramp lesions this recess should not be mistaken as a tear as we will say it, uh, see later in the cases and now this is just a posterior view and there are a lot more structures that we need to know about so just to start off here this is the PCL insertion then in uh, blue in this dark blue is the posterior horn of the middle meniscus with the posterior root. The meniscotibial ligament is not as broad as the posterior joint capsule insertion. So the posterior joint capsule or the menisco capsular insertion is much broader than the meniscotibial ligament. So we have to realize that because if we scroll through a sagittal view, you will see this meniscotibial ligament at some point disappearing. And the next attachment will be then one portion of the semimembranosus tendon that is inserting also there. But these are hard to see and not really of uh, importance, at least not for this video. The posterior joint capsule is then going immediately blending in with portions of the posterior oblique ligament as an extension or enforcement of the posterior joint or the posterior medial joint capsule rather. And then we have also insertions of the deep layer of the MCL that is also attaching on the medial meniscus, but then more in the body on the medial side. So this is uh, not so easy to understand. A posterior view, I show you an image uh, where you can appreciate it better. 
and that is from the mentioned study by De Filippo. And I think this is a great image. You can see here the posterior horn of the middle meniscus, the joint capsule with the meniscal capsular insertion, which is a little bit broader here. And then at some point it's blending in with the posterior oblique ligament and the deep layer of the MCL here. So this is basically all in one continuation, but we are focusing now here on this portion there. Another nice image is this one here, where you have the posterior joint capsule, blending in then with the posterior oblique ligament and the deep MCL layer. So this is the area of interest right now. And here again you can see that the meniscotibial ligament is not as broad as the joint capsule insertion here, which is broader, so it's gonna stop at some point. Before we move on to the cases, just a quick shout out to my newest patron, Xenia. Hi, thanks for your support and also thanks to all the other patrons for their continuing support. If you want to know more about and want to get exclusive video content, then go check out my homepage over on patreon.com. So this is the medial compartment, just a quick repetition for the normal anatomy. We have here the PCL and we are now scrolling medially. You can see the posterior root of the medial meniscus, posterior horn, and here we have the meniscal tibial ligament, which is connecting the base here of the meniscus with the tibia here, this ligament here, and then we have the meniscal capsular ligament, which is broader, extending far more medially than the meniscal tibial ligament, which we cannot really appreciate here anymore. So the meniscal tibial ligament is a shorter one here, and this one here is broader as I have shown you previously. And you can some, somewhat appreciate that it's not inserting on the top of the meniscus, but rather here in the one third down approximately, and probably also not always fully stretched, and it can have like this wave appearance and sometimes you see this recess here, which is probably not um, of clinical relevance because I think that's just this, this ramp basically, or even here, this tiny notch here, I wouldn't call this a tear. So this is an illustration of a recent skeletal radiology article where you have the posterior horn of the middle meniscus. You can see that the menisco capsular ligament is somewhat inserting a little bit down here, creating this ramp, if you will. Then we have the meniscotibial ligament here and here parts of the posterior joint capsule and in between there seems to be fatty tissue. Now we can go and have a look at a few cases. Um, this is a nice illustration but sometimes the reality still looks a little bit different. So here another example, we have an intact ACL, PCL insertion here and now we scroll medially and we can see here the posterior joint capsule. Let me zoom in. So all the way down here. And here we can actually see this fatty tissue in between this uh, ligament. So joint capsule coming down here. Then we have the meniscal capsular ligament inserting at this point here, probably this one here, creating or normally having this tiny uh, indentations or recesses or whatever, and a little bit of wavy appearance, I think. So this is still uh, normal. And then if we go centrally again we can look for the meniscal tibial ligament which is probably a portion of this one here going down here so we have these insertions and in between there is really this fatty tissue in in this patient but let's have a look at another patient so obviously we have a normal acl we have the pcl insertion and if we scroll now medially we can again appreciate here the joint capsule. This one is the oblique popliteal ligament as part of the posterior joint capsule. And sometimes it's not fatty. As you can see here, we have this gray tissue in between these ligaments and the meniscus space going centrally again. So at this level somewhere should be the meniscal tibial ligament. Probably this is a portion here. It's a little bit gray as well. And then the meniscal capsular ligament. It seems a little bit I don't know, fibrotic or whatever, not a lot of fat, but you see this frequently and not sure whether this is a old injury that healed or what, um, but it's not always fat, so keep that in mind. And I wouldn't say that this is a ramp lesion or a meniscal capsule separation, or I wouldn't even say that it's an old one, because clearly this patient has other problems here with the subcontral insufficiency fracture. 
So now we should have a good understanding of how the anatomy of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus and its capsular insertions look like. And next week we will look how ramp lesions actually present themselves on MRI. Don't forget to really look for these because, as I said, one in four patients with ACL tears have ramp lesions and even in chronic ACL insufficiency or chronic ACL tears, the probability is even higher because it's like the last piece of resistance once the ACL is torn. So they are important to look for them. Thanks for watching and see you next week.